So, and dear students, this is the third lecture on the design of the weld uh, joints and in this lecture, I uh, will be mainly focusing on the uh, different types of the edge preparations which are used for developing the sound weld joints, so that the full penetration weld joints can be produced. In the previous uh, lecture, uh, based on this topic, we have talked about uh, the different kind of uh, uh, different types of the weld joints and the different types of the welds which are commonly used for developing the weld joints. Uh, we know that uh, uh, that for developing the full penetration weld joints, it is necessary that whatever heat is applied from the top, that should be in position to cause the through thickness melting, so that uh, the full penetration weld can be produced. But uh, in case of uh, the thick sheets, uh, when thick plates are to be welded, application of the heat from the top does not help in melting and the edges of the plates through the thickness and uh, that is why it does not help in getting the full penetration weld. So, for those situations it becomes mandatory to uh, prepare the edges of the plates, so that uh, proper access uh, to the heat source uh, can be provided, so that melting of uh, and the paying surfaces of the base metal up to the root can be ensured and uh, that is why uh, it becomes uh, necessary to prepare uh, the edges of the plates to be welded. Uh, in this presentation, we will be talking about the various aspects related with the edge preparation and uh, uh, their selection. So, first of all, we will be talking, uh, talking about the technological aspects related to the different joints, uh, uh, how they uh, do they affect the mechanical performance of uh, the weld joints, if they selected like the, uh, uh, the butt weld joint, the fillet weld joint and uh, how the groove geometry affects the performance of the weld joints. For example, we have the square groove, uh, V groove, U groove, J groove uh, are the, and the uh, double uh, U, V, J groove geometries. So, each type of the groove geometry offers its own advantages and disadvantages each type uh, and uh, accordingly um, the each type of the groove geometry in respect of uh, the technological aspects related with them will be uh, discussed one by one. Thereafter, we will see what uh, how uh, we can define the different terms related uh, with the weld joints uh, like uh, the width of the weld bead, uh, bead reinforcement, penetration and uh, the different parameters which are used uh, for uh, uh, defining the weld bead geometry and uh, uh, the different parts of the weld. Thereafter, we will see that uh, what methodology we can use for designing the weld joint and then we will take up finally, the design of the weld joint for aesthetic loading uh, for uh, and that will ta be taking up for the two types of welds that is butt weld and the fillet weld. Uh, we know that uh, the, um, that various types of the edge preparations are carried out to ensure that through thickness melting takes place for developing the full penetration weld joint and these preparations uh, may be of the square. A uh, groove, a uh, single U, single V, single J, B well, double U, double V, and double J joints. And accordingly, uh, these uh, ge groove geometries can be seen from this diagram when the two plates are prepared just to have the square edges and brought together with certain space, it forms the square groove geometry. And when the both edges of the plates are beveled to form the single. V and when the, the V uh, kind of the uh, geometry is obtained on both the sides of the plates, then it forms the double V and beveling is done when the one only one side of the plate and other side uh, of the plate uh, or edge, edge kept a square, then it forms the single bevel and when beveling is done in both the sides of one plate, while one pl another plate is kept a square, then it forms the double V uh, double bevel. And uh, when uh, the half view, uh, half U uh, shape is produced in one side of the plate and another half U is uh, prepared in another edge of the plate, then uh, when the two plates are with these kind of geometries are brought, brought uh, close to each other, it forms the single U. And the similarly, uh, when the plates uh, uh, both upper and uh, the lower surfaces uh, at the edges are prepared for having the single U. Uh, in one side and uh, means uh, one U in uh, one side and another U in the bottom side, then it forms the double U uh, groove geometry and uh, then the double uh, J when, when one side of the edge uh, of one side of the plate is prepared to have the J kind of geometry while another kept as a straight and a square, then it forms uh, the single J and uh, similarly we can have 
the preparation of the one plate uh, for having the j kind of geometry in um, in both the sides of one plate then it forms the double j uh, each uh, type of the group geometry offers the specific features in respect of the amount of the weld metal uh, which is required to develop the weld joint uh, residual stress and distortion tendency uh, welding speed and the amount of heat which is required for uh, melting uh, the fing surfaces and access to uh, the root of uh, the groove. Uh, these are the factors that are affected by the selection of, uh, uh, of these um, uh, group geometries. So, uh, the different group geometries will be uh, critically assessed from these uh, uh, characteristics point of view and we will find that uh, each type of the group geometry will have certain advantages uh, in respect of certain characteristics while disadvantages on, on in respect of some other uh, characteristics. So, uh, we will be starting with the single uh, groove geometries, uh, single groove geometries uh, will have the single groove weld uh, which is mainly used in case of the thin plate where uh, the groove is made in just one side or uh, means only upper side of the plate and uh, uh, this may be in form of uh, the single V, single U or uh, the single uh, J and this kind of the geometry is mainly used for the plates uh, of thickness greater than 5 mm and uh, less than 15 mm. Uh, however, this range is not found to be very hard and fast uh, because it is governed by the kind of penetration which will be possible using a particular process which uh, is to be used. So, the factors that predominantly govern this range up to which the single group geometry can be used is determined uh, or limited by the penetration capability of the welding process being used and uh, the kind of parameters which are being used for development of the weld joint because uh, the range of parameters which uh, will be used for developing the weld joints will directly be affecting the depth of penetration and in general uh, the welding current uh, in case of arc welding processes becomes the main parameter that affect the penetration capability. So, for a given uh, if we are using the high heat input process like SAW with the high current current capacity uh, for example, 1000 ampere or 15 ampere then it will offer the higher penetration capabilities and in that case we can work even with the single groove geometries up to the 15 to 20 or even up to the 25 mm thickness uh, with the full penetration uh, weld. So, depending upon the penetration capability we can uh, use the single groove weld for the different thicknesses however, it is common to use the single groove geometries in range of 5 to 15 mm thickness uh, for the uh, thicknesses lesser than the 5 mm um, uh, normally the square groove geometry is preferred. Uh, the double groove geometry like uh, double V, double uh, J, double V groove geometries are used uh, under the two conditions when the thickness of the plate is generally greater than 25 mm. Uh, 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 so, that uh, the required penetration up to the root can be achieved from both the sides and the distortion of the weld joint is to be minimized. So, for those situations where uh, the application of the weld metal just from one side has the tendency to distort the plate out of the position. So, for those situations the double groove geometries are used where weld metal is deposited um, uh, in sequence uh, uh, one by one uh, from uh, first on the upper side then on the lower side and this kind of sequence is maintained until. Uh, the whole of the weld, uh, weld groove is uh, completed. So, uh, mainly for those situations where distortion is to be controlled double V groove, uh, double groove geometries are used and uh, another situation where the plate thickness is greater than the 25 mm then in order to ensure the penetration up to the root uh, the double groove geometries are used. So, these are the basically two situations where double groove geometries are preferred. Uh, further uh, ad advantage related with the double groove geometries uh, um, is that uh, the, the volume of the weld metal which is to be deposited for developing the weld joint of the greater thicknesses uh, becomes less uh, as compared to the, the uh, single groove geometries. So, these are other aspects uh, related with the advantages and disadvantages of the single groove and double groove geometries we will be talking up in the uh, coming um, uh, slides. 
Uh, and now, uh, the, the selection uh, behind the specific kind of the group geometry for uh, edge preparation is governed by the many important factors that affect the total economics of uh, the edge preparation and the factors that affect the uh, cost of developing a weld uh, using a particular kind of the group geometry uh, is governed by uh, the machining cost which is required for developing a group uh, geometry. Uh, it, it is commonly found that the single uh, uh, sorry V group geometries can be developed easily at low cost while uh, difficulties are encountered while developing the J and the U group geometries. So, the machining cost increases for those cases and uh, the U uh, square group geometries are found to be of the minimum cost means they can be developed at minimum cost. Um, then uh, another important aspect is the cost of the well metal which is to be deposited and it is directly related with the volume of the metal that should be deposited for developing a well joint. So, uh, all those geometries that help in reducing the volume of the well metal to be deposited, uh, they will be beneficial in respect of the cost of well metal to be deposited and in, in this aspect if we see then the uh, single J, single uh, U. The group geometries will be uh, beneficial as compared to that of the single V geometries, especially in case of the thicker welds. Uh, so, uh, the, the cost of the weld metal will be affected by the kind of the, the group geometry which is being used. Uh, and similarly, weld speed, weld speed is found to be higher for those group geometries where weld metal to be deposited is lesser. Um, then the other group geometries uh, and because of this the U and the J uh, group geometries offer the higher welding speed because they reduce the volume of the metal to be deposited for developing the weld joint for a given plate thickness. Another important aspect that affect the selection of the specific groove is the accessibility of the groove for depositing the weld metal. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, it becomes difficult to apply the weld metal in the desired location, especially in case of the complex group geometries like uh, U and J and because of this uh, uh, there may be possibility that uh, due to the lack of accessibility of the groove up to the root, um, uh, some uh, unfused uh, portion uh, uh, can be left uh, where uh, the proper melting cannot take place and this that can lead to the uh, either un, uh, unwelded portion or the portion with a lot of stress ridges which can uh, decrease the strength of the weld significantly. So, for the, the certain groove geometries like uh, the U and the J, they uh, adversely affect the accessibility of uh, Mm, the accessibility of the root of the groove for depositing the weld metal while uh, the uh, V uh, groove geometry offers the better accessibility for up to the root of uh, the groove for depositing the weld metal and to bring that to the molten state. Uh, then the residual stress and uh, the distortion control requirements. Uh, we know that the single, um, single V uh, groove geometry uh, will be required. Uh, a single V group geometries require greater amount of the well metal to be deposited and uh, uh, because of the larger volume of the well metal requirement, uh, the greater expansion and contraction ex is experienced by the well metal and the heat affected zone and that in turn results in the greater residual stresses and the distortion tendencies in the uh, distortion tendencies of the well joint. So, uh, those were well uh, those group geometries which uh, help in uh, help in reducing the volume of the well metal to be deposited uh, they will be reducing uh, the residual stress and the distortion related uh, problems. Further uh, the, the distortion related problems are more uh, encountered in case of the single uh, group geometries like single V and the single J. So, for those situations it is preferred to go for the double V, W and double uh, J group geometries. So, we can see that the selection of the specific group geometry will be dictated by the machining cost which is associated with the particular group geometry, the cost of the well metal that is to be deposited uh, when particular kind of uh, group geometry is used, uh, the welding speed which is obtained that in turn affects the productivity. 
and uh, the accessibility of the groove for depositing the weld metal and to bring that up to the molten state, especially in case of the root of the groove and, uh, the, uh, the and how the residual stress and distortion related problems are associated with a particular kind of uh, uh, the groove geometry. So, these factors uh, significantly affect the selection of the specific uh, groove geometry. Now, we will be taking up uh, the uh, one by one uh, the each type of the groove geometry with the positive and negative sides. Uh, we know that uh, the application of the U and the J groove geometries are found better than the V and the bevel groove geometries, because uh, the, these U and J groove geometries offer many advantages uh, over the V and the bevel groove. Uh, geometries and uh, that those benefits are especially obtained in respect of uh, the low volume of the well metal to be deposited with the U and J group geometries as compared to the V and B well groups. Similarly, the distortion residual stress problems are uh, less because the, uh, the less volume of the well metal is to be deposited uh, in case of the U and J group geometries and similarly, uh, the welding speed is found high as the less volume of the weld metal is to be deposited for developing the weld joint of a given thickness. Uh, but there are many other uh, bad sites related to the, the with these group geometries and uh, these are uh, like difficulty in machining. It is found difficult to uh, achieve the U and the J groove geometries uh, on the edges of the plates that are being prepared for um, and, uh, developing these group geometries. Further uh, accessibility of arc up to the root of uh, the groove becomes difficult for uh, these U and J groove geometries and uh, because of the poor accessibility fusion of the fang surfaces especially at the root becomes difficult when these groove geometries are used. So, um, but uh, uh, many times uh, due to the very good advantages related with the U and J groove geometries. Uh, these are preferred especially for uh, especially when the residual stress problems are more and uh, the higher welding speed is to be achieved. Uh, but they are, they, uh, apart from uh, those uh, uh, disadvantages related with the uh, V and uh, the um, bevel group geometries, there are many good uh, sites uh, uh, related with these geometries and uh, the positives of the bevel and the V group geometries include uh, the easier edge preparation either by machining or the flame cutting because very straight cut is made for developing the V bevel uh, and the V group geometries and that can be done very easily by uh, machining and the flame cut machining or the flame cutting. So, the cost of uh, developing the uh, group geometries th this V and uh, bevel group geometries uh, uh, becomes slower as compared to the J and the V group uh, J and uh, the U group geometries. And uh, further because of the wider opening from the top uh, accessibility of the arc and the heat source becomes uh, good uh, up to the root uh, of the groove and so the chances related with the lack of fusion and uh, the deposition of the weld metal up to the root uh, related problems are reduced with the bevel and the V groove geometries. So, as far as positives are concerned easier to obtain by machining and the flame cutting and uh, the good accessibility of applying the heat up to the root of grooves in, to, in order to ensure the, um, the melting up to the bottom. So, as to obtain the full penetration weld joint easily, but uh, these groove geometries suffer with the many uh, undesirable uh, aspects like uh, the volume of the weld metal to be deposited with these groove geometries is more. So, uh, the, there will be more uh, problems related to the residual stresses distortion as compared to the case of uh, J and the U group geometries. So, because of these two um, uh, undesirable effects, uh, especially in case of the thick uh, plates, uh, the, uh, in especially in case of the thick plates, the U and the J, J group geometries are preferred. Another important thing uh, due to the requirement of uh, the large volume of the weld metal to be, uh, to be deposited for uh, developing the uh, weld uh, for developing the weld joint uh, especially in case of thick uh, plates uh, the weld uh, welding speed is reduced and which in turn with the V and bevel group geometries the productivity is reduced. 
So, um, uh, the undesirable aspects related with these guru observatories include the large volume of the well metal to be deposited for developing the well joint and uh, the more residualistas and distortion related problems. Then uh, the V group geometry, square group geometry is one of the most preferred kind of the geometry, especially in case of the thin sheets uh, which are lesser than the 10 mm. However, uh, this uh, limit of the 10 mm can vary significantly depending upon the penetration which can be achieved from a given uh, process using a given set of the welding parameters. Um, the, the most preferred, the, this geometry is preferred because uh, the, edge, uh, the cost of the edge preparation with this kind of the uh, group geometry is minimum and the volume of the well metal to be deposited with this kind of the geometry is also minimum, but uh, the penetration uh, is the only factor that limits the uh, thickness up to which the square group geometry can be used. So, uh, those welding processes with the high penetration capability and uh, which can use the higher current, they can work with the um, square group geometry even with the thicker plates. So, a square group geometry is usually not used for the higher thicknesses above 10 mm mainly due to the difficulties associated with the poor penetration. So, due to the limited penetration capability with the uh, above the 10 mm, uh, this uh, square group geometry is usually not used. Uh, uh, this, so, this is one reason that uh, uh, the use of uh, the square group above 10 mm is not preferred because it reduces the penetration. Uh, or the poor penetration is achieved further the accessibility uh, poor accessibility uh, of, of the root means the melting up to the root and uh, it, it becomes difficult and we cannot uh, it becomes difficult to apply the weld metal right up to the root of the plate which is being welded and the lack of fusion tendency at the root uh, of the weld uh, makes the weld joint weaker uh, because this uh, unwel uh, unwelded and unfused portion on the root side acts as a stress razor which uh, uh, significantly reduces the mechanical performance of the weld and therefore, uh, the square group geometry uh, is mainly used for welding of the thin sheets by the processes like uh, the TIG, uh, that is that's the tungsten inert gas or the metal inert gas welding process or the thick plates uh, only by the submerged dark welding which is the high penetration welding process and uses very high level of current which can be as high as 2000 amperes. So, why uh, group, group welds are preferred uh, uh, as compared to the other uh, the fillet uh, welds uh, that is what will be seen like uh, so this will be indicating the uh, effect of the group geometries and the type of the joint which is being selected for development of weld joints on the mechanical performance. So, we know that the groove, uh, groove butt welds are mainly used for the general purpose and for the critical applications where the tensile and the fatigue load can take place during the service. So, it is common to use the butt uh, groove weld uh, joints because this kind of uh, the geometry means this kind of joint results in the better tensile and the fatigue loading performance uh, as compared to the fillet weld joint. Uh, these group geometries result in the minimum stress concentration and stress is stresses are mil uniformly distributed across the section of the weld joint and because of this reason uh, the crack nucleation and its propagation tendency is found minimum uh, especially under the tensile and the fatigue load conditions and that is why the groove butt welds are mainly used for the critical applications where the tensile and the fatigue load can take place during the service. Uh, unlike the fillet, the butt groove geometry does not cause any stress localization um, except those caused by the poor weld bead geometry and the weld effect. So, if the weld is sound and weld bead profile is perfect, then inherently the butt groove geometry does not uh, cause any stress localization. Uh, which can help in the nu easy nucleation and the growth of crack and because of this a uh, very good side of the butt group geometries the tensile and fatigue uh, loading performance of uh, the butt groove uh, geometries is found much better as compared to the fillet welds. So, uh, and therefore, stresses caused by the external loading with the butt groove geometries 
uh, stress is caused by uh, the external loading um, largely becomes uniform across uh, the section in the groove weld and hence the partake crack nucleation and subsequent propagation tendency is significantly lowered uh, in the butt weld, uh, butt groove weld as compared to the fillet weld and other types of the weld and because of this unique uh, feature associated, associated with the butt groove welds. Um, the, these are preferred for uh, those uh, uh, services where uh, the loading can be dynamic in nature and uh, um, uh, high tensile load can act during the service. Um, because this kind of the geometry offers the advantage of uh, having uniform uh, stress distribution across the cross section uh, and it discourages any kind of localization of the stresses uh, which can nucleate uh, the crack and uh, cause the easy fracture. So, and because of this, uh, the butt groove geometries offer the better tensile and the particular performance as compared to the fillet and other types of the weld. Uh, well, the fillet welds are used for producing the lap joint, edge joint and the T joint especially in case of the non-critical applications. Uh, these uh, uh, fillet welds uh, do not require any edge preparation and hence found more economical to produce especially in case of, of the comparatively thin plates uh, as compared to the V groove welds. So, uh, the advantage side of the fillet weld is that they do not require uh, a special edge preparation to uh, deposit the weld metal and uh, uh, just uh, the edges of the plates and the surfaces are made a square and the weld metal is deposited by melting the surface of the base metal directly uh, without any edge preparation and because of this advantage uh, these are found economical as com but this kind of uh, the weld are especially used for uh, joining the thin plates and if the um, the critical joints are to be made for uh, very special applications uh, uh, of the thin plates then the groove welds are used because the fillet welds uh, have the inherent uh, the stress razor feature which e easily nucleates and uh, nucleates the crack and uh, facilitate th their easy growth under the dynamic loading conditions and that is why for critical applications the fillet welds are not used. So, uh, because of the advantage of uh, no, uh, no requirement of the edge preparation, these are found to be economical especially for developing the joints of the uh, uh, thin plates. So, if we compare the thin fillet welds and the groove welds as far as the weld volume is concerned, uh, an increase in size of the fillet weld uh, increases the volume of the weld metal significantly. Uh, but uh, with the increase in the uh, thickness of the plate, uh, the volume of the weld metal does not increase in case of the groove weld that much. So, uh, for uh, the small size weld, the volume of the weld metal deposited in case of the fillet weld is found to be less, but if the weld, um, uh, if the large size fillet is to be made, then the volume of uh, the weld metal to be deposited for the fillet welds increases significantly. Hence, the fillet welds becomes uneconomical for the large size weld as compared to the groove weld. So, uh, for understanding this uh, we will be using one diagram. Here we can see if the fillet, uh, if uh, The, these are the two plates uh, to be welded for developing overlap joint using the fillet weld, then the fillet weld will be made like this by depositing the weld metal. So, uh, the volume of uh, the weld metal for depositing the thick plates uh, this becomes significantly greater if the thickness of these two plates is more as compared to the case we can prepare uh, uh, the edges of the plates 
in B well, we can give slightly B welling to the edges of the plate and then uh, the same, same lap joint for the same thickness and the weld metal can be deposited like this for developing the weld. So, this is the kind of the lap joint being made using the groove weld and this is the lap joint being made using the fillet weld. So, uh, in case of fillet weld, we do not require any edge preparation, only the surface and edges are made square, while in case of the groove weld, the a, say for this B weld, groove weld, uh, uh, the one edge will be B weld slightly and then weld metal will be deposited. So, in this case when um, the fill, so what we want to say that if the size of the fillet weld is increased significantly, then it requires the large volume of the weld metal, but um, uh, with the groove welds increase in size uh, does not increases the volume of the weld metal uh, to be deposited appreciably. So, this is the advantage related with the groove weld uh, as far as the weld volume of the weld metal to be deposited for thick sheets. So, uh, see an increase in size of the fillet weld. Uh, uh, in terms of the throat thickness and the lag length of the weld in uh, this uh, the volume is the size of. So, increase in size of the fillet weld increases the volume of the weld metal deposited, uh, volume of the weld metal in the fillet weld increases uh, uh, significantly and hence the fillet weld becomes uneconomical for large size uh, weld as compared to the groove weld. For large size uh, welds uh, the groove weld um, does not increase the volume of the weld metal to be deposited significantly and that is why it becomes economical, but um, the, uh, there will be associated edge preparation cost with the uh, groove welds. So, due to the inherent nature of the fillet weld, uh, if we try to compare the fillet weld and the groove welds uh, in respect of the stress concentration possibility, then due to the inherent nature of the fillet weld. Uh, geometry, the stresses are localized and get concentrated near the toe of the weld, which frequently facilitates the easy nucleation and the growth of crack, especially under the tensile and the fatigue load conditions. Means, if we if we see uh, this diagram, fillet weld being made between uh, the two plates in form of uh, the T joint, then it is made normally by little melting of the base material on both the sides. So, so this is the weld, and the junction of the weld with the uh, base material uh, is called the toe of the weld. So this at uh, this toe of the weld, uh, we have abrupt change in cross section of the load resisting cross sectional area. Say in this case. Here, uh, there is a sudden uh, increase in cross section here um, we, as soon as we come across the weld and similarly, there is a sudden increase in cross section here in both the sides. So, if we see as soon as we come across the weld, there will be sudden increase in cross sectional area uh, as soon as we come uh, closer to the toe of the weld and before that the distribution of stresses will be uniform. So, because of this inherent feature related to the fillet weld at the toe uh, stress localization invariably stress localization or stress uh, concentration invariably takes place and when the ex uh, external uh, loading is done which is of uh, the dynamic in nature then crack uh, cracks tend to nucleate easily at the location of this toe while in case of the groove weld where edges are prepared for developing the weld joint and then by melting the fing surfaces um, and the weld is made say this V group geometry. So, by melting uh, these fing surfaces when the groove is made like this. So, this is the weld with V groove geometry. So, for this kind of uh, uh, the you know, V groove or U groove or J groove, uh, 
geometry uh, the, the 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 transition uh, means uh, the uh, change in cross section uh, of the load resisting cross, cross sectional area of uh, the base metal uh, to the weld metal is very gradual and because of this uh, uh, gradual transition in the load resisting cross sectional area from the base metal to the weld metal the stress localization doesn't take place easily unless uh, the weld bead profile is extremely bad uh, the weld bead profile can be bad especially in case say this is the v groove uh, uh, geometry being used for developing, developing the weld and the weld has been developed very badly using this kind of reinforcement and melting of the fing surfaces so if this is the kind of weld bead geometry obtained even with the help of the uh, groove um, Mm, uh, square groove geometry, then uh, there will be sudden change in re load resisting cross sectional area at the toe of the weld and this will be acting as a stress uh, concentration source of the stress concentration and uh, will facilitate the crack nucleation and its growth under the fatigue load conditions. So, if the weld bead geometry is extremely poor then it will uh, increase the uh, stress localization at the toe of the weld even in case of the square group geometries. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the stress localization is found more severe in case of the fillet weld as compared to the square uh, as compared to the uh, groove uh, welds. So, um, and now uh, why this is kind of stress concentration uh, takes place in the fillet weld, the stress concentration in fillet weld near the toe of the weld occurs mainly due to the abrupt change in cross, uh, abrupt change in the load resisting cross sectional area from the base metal to the weld metal and because of this abrupt change at the toe of the weld stress localization takes place uh, where from the cracks uh, tend to uh, nucleate and grow easily. So, what can be done for reducing this kind of stress localization in case of the fillet and the uh, groove welds especially uh, near the toe of the weld where uh, a sudden change in cross sectional area means load resisting cross sectional area of the weld is encountered. So, the one uh, major thing which is done is to have a very gradual change in the load resisting cross, uh, load resisting cross sectional area um, in case of the fillet and the groove weld and for this purpose efforts are made uh, for developing the weld joint in such a way uh, that uh, the weld groove um, the weld is made using uh, uh, by developing the uh, by depositing the weld metal in such a way that the transition from the base metal to the weld metal is very gradual like this. So, the bead angle is very low and the weld metal is deposited. So, so those uh, so in the weld metal is deposited deposited in such a way that the base metal to the weld metal transition is very gradual. So, so say for this kind of so uh, transition is uh, is uh, achieved so that uh, uh, the stresses are not localized at one particular location, and uh, so this is one way that the weld bead profile is controlled in order to have the gradual transition from the base metal to the weld region and another effort which is especially made in case of the fillet weld. If this is the fillet weld which has been developed then uh, at this uh, location there will be very sharp transition um, as far as the load resisting cross sectional area is concerned. So, in order to avoid this kind of the sharp transition and normally uh, the, the some uh, the machining or grinding is done. Uh, so that uh, uh, so that the the weld metal is deposited and some amount of the metal is uh, removed from uh, the toe area it means toe, the area where uh, the weld metal is uh, is connecting to the base material so important thing is that some sort of machining is done say this is the fillet and then some sort of machining is done like this so that transition is gradual from the base metal to the weld metal. So, this kind of machining is done, this is weld metal and some sort of machining or grinding is done to have the gradual transition from the weld to the base metal. So, this is uh, the approach for uh, facilitating and the for reducing the stress localization in the fillet and the uh, weld groove.
So, for this purpose uh, uh, as you have said to reduce the stress localization it becomes mandatory to have as gradual transition in the load resisting cross sectional area as possible either by controlled deposition of the weld metal using the suitable welding parameters. So, that uh, the weld bead angle is as low as possible. So, efforts are made for achieving the situation where weld bead angle is as low as possible. So, that the transition from the base metal to the weld metal is very gradual and the second is that material is removed in very controlled way from the weld metal and the base metal in such a way that the transition from the base metal to the weld metal becomes very gradual and the uniform. So, that the stress localization tendency is reduced. We have seen that there are certain advantages related with the fillet weld and uh, the groove weld and uh, uh, to take the advantages of the both kind of uh, uh, the welds uh, uh, sometimes uh, the both are involved for developing or both are used for developing the weld joint. Say the development of the T joint is one typical case uh, uh, as being given in this uh, figure where um, uh, in one side directly the fillet weld has been made while another side uh, the edge of the plate was prepared and then weld metal was deposited to have uh, the groove weld. So, uh, the weld, uh, so this kind of uh, the combination many times help in reducing um, the cost of uh, uh, the uh, development of uh, the weld joint through the reducing the uh, by reducing the cost of edge preparation at the same time development of the edge in one side helps in achieving the proper penetration uh, through the thickness of the plate which is being welded. So, that the desired full penetration weld can be obtained and uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, fracture tendency of the weld joint can be reduced. So, to take the advantage of the both groove and the fillet welds, sometimes the combined groove and uh, fillet welds are used for developing the weld joint. Now, uh, we will be talking about the certain uh, the important terms which are used in case of the welding and the weld joints. Uh, in order to um, uh, understand them uh, that how these should be controlled properly and what should be controlled. Uh, so, for each uh, purpose uh, very specific kind of terms are used. So, those uh, will be um, uh, uh, covered now. Now, we know that the deposition of the weld metal for uh, developing the sound weld joint with optimum groove design must be controlled properly. Uh, to get the optimum combination of the various features of the weld bead and but these features um, uh, affect uh, because these features affect the load carrying capability of the joint. So, the features that should be controlled properly for developing the optimum weld bead geometry it is necessary to uh, look into that the proper root opening is obtained the proper root face is there and the proper root groove angle is developed. Uh, for depositing the weld, weld metal. So, uh, to see this uh, we will uh, we'll make up another diagram say uh, in case of the V grooves. So, uh, the groove is made in one side and then one flat uh, straight region is there and then this is one side say the edges has been prepared in the uh, plate in one side and the similarly edge has been prepared in the plate in another side and the plates with the prepared edges are brought close to each other. So, the is, so this, this portion of the plate is called this entire portion is called root of the groove and the space between the plates at the root side is called the root opening. It is always desired to have the proper root opening, so that the weld metal can reach there up to the bottom and unnecessary falling down all of the weld metal is also avoided. So, too wide root opening is not good, because weld metal will have tendency to fall down through this gap. So, it is good to have an optimum range of the root opening. Then, then there is a root face. So, this the straight portion below the uh, the, the beveled edge of the plate is, is called root face. 
root face uh, uh, sometimes it is kept 0 or uh, uh, some width is given. So, this uh, portion of uh, uh, the root face will be melting with the application of the heat uh, during the welding and it will avoid unnecessary falling of the weld metal uh, through this uh, the root opening. Then, uh, then weld metal is deposited by melting the fing surfaces of uh, of, of uh, um, both the plates and the weld metal is deposited like this. So, say if by melting uh, all these uh, edges and faint surfaces of the base metal, weld metal has been developed, then uh, this width is called width of the weld bead, width of weld and the height of the weld above the, the surface of the plate is called reinforcement. Uh, it is always preferred that the reinforcement to the width ratio is maintained below certain limits, so that the proper bead angle is obtained. So, angle of the weld bead with respect to the surface of the base metal, uh, this one is controlled. So, this one we can say as bead angle, uh, efforts are always made to have this bead angle as low as possible, so that the transition from the well metal to the base metal to the well metal is very gradual and, uh, and uh, it is very slow, so that uh, any localization of the stresses at the toe of the weld can be minimized. This portion is called the toe of the weld where the weld bead may, uh, uh, connects with the base metal. Well, in case of the fillet welds, uh, this is the say uh, that some T joint is to be made, this is the surface of uh, this is the lower plate and this is the upper plate and the fillet weld is to be made like this by melting the uh, uh, base metal surfaces. So, this is the root and uh, this is the toe of the weld, this is the face of weld and uh, the uh, line uh, straight line of the shortest length passing through the face of the weld is called throat. This throat uh, length of uh, this uh, the this throat decides the load resisting cross sectional area and uh, this uh, uh, length uh, and the length of the weld means uh, uh, this length from the toe to the, the root of the weld this length is called uh, leg length, leg length of the weld. Uh, basically for uh, determining the load resisting cross sectional area, throat thickness is, uh, is used for calculation purpose to determine the load resisting cross sectional area of the weld. Since we cannot measure this distance directly, so for this purpose uh, leg length is used and, for, uh, and uh, there is a direct relationship which is obtained say in this fillet, this is the weld and this is the throat thickness. To determine the throat thickness, basically we measure this lag length which is measurable using the meteorological instruments, say lag length is L, then throat thickness is obtained using the 0 0.707 times of the lag length. This is how it is determined practically and this uh, throat thickness is directly used for calculation of the uh, load resisting cross sectional area, uh, area of the fillet welds. So, as far as terms are concerned, uh, we will be talking about the different terms which are used uh, in, uh, in, in the welds joints like the root opening, the root face and the groove angle. Uh, now, the, uh, these common features schematically has been shown in these two diagrams, this, can, this is the butt weld and this is the fillet weld this is the toe of the weld, this is weld face, toe of the weld, this is the fusion zone 
and this is the root of the weld. And in case of uh, the groove welds, so this is the toe of the weld, this is weld face, the weld metal, this is the root face and uh, this is the root opening. So, these are the important terms related to the fillet weld and uh, the butt weld. So, now in the uh, next slide uh, uh, means in the coming presentation, we will be talking about the methodologies which are used for the design of the weld joints under the static loading conditions. So, uh, now I will uh, try to summarize this presentation. In this presentation, we have seen the various kind of the groove geometries which are commonly used for developing the weld joints and uh, the various technological aspects related with each kind of the groove geometry in, in terms of uh, the weld metal uh, to be deposited, the stress concentration related with the each kind of geometry and uh, the, uh, the specific areas where uh, these kind of the geometries can be used effectively for developing the weld joint. Uh, we have in the last we have also uh, tried to see the different uh, the terms related uh, with the, uh, the weld uh, joints which are developed uh, either using the fillet weld or the butt weld. So, in the coming presentation, we will try to see the step by steps uh, uh, of the methods, step by step methods which are used for designing the weld joints for the static loading as well as the dynamic loading. Thank you for your attention.